It's time I fessed up, Yurikins. I saw the whole thing. What was it you think you saw? It looked like you were singing to the children in the alley out back. And may I say, you were fantastic. Your performance hit me right in the heart. That was a song from Middle Frog's Imperial Capital show, right? Ah, the good old days. You must have come back night after night if you remember it that well. Perhaps a few times. I remember well how you looked upon that stage. You were the talk of the capital among all the nobles. Unsurpassable? Yes, that was it. It's hard to believe I'd run into that unsurpassable songstress in a place like this. <laughs> Luck is on my side, as ever. I couldn't convince you to sing tenor yourself, hmm? You're talented enough for it. What are you getting at? Is this an invitation from the mystical songstress herself? Male virtuosos are hard to come by. Would-be divas are a dime a dozen, but men? Not so much. And they have to be talented. As good as I am, which is very talented indeed. I think you have what it takes. If you're interested, I can... Sorry, but no. No way in hell am I ever doing that. Goodness. You could have stopped at no. I can't think of anything more wretched than getting up on a stage to sing in front of a bunch of people. You didn't seem to mind singing for those children. The little ones weren't feeling well and couldn't sleep, so I sang them a lullaby to help. That's a far cry from standing on the same stage as you have, with all of those stuffy nobles staring at me. Truthfully, I'm not brave enough for it. Rain it in, Yurikins. It's the opera, not the battlefield. This isn't a life-or-death situation. <laughs> Fair enough. Sometimes I forget what's a real threat and what isn't. But I must ask you to never bring up singing again. Not to me. Not if you want to keep things amicable between us. How can someone that good at singing hate it so much? Nice to see you, Yurikins. I was wondering if you might do me a favor. You're looking a bit serious, Ladybird. Oh, your foot. What happened? It's healing nicely, but I'm not supposed to put too much weight on it. Ah, so that's why you've called me here. What do you need? Help with errands? Not an errand. An opera. I see. There's been some loose plans for a performance. Nothing professional, strictly volunteer. I signed up to take part as one of the main roles. And then this happened. The professor told me I should bow out just to be on the safe side. Makes sense to stay off your feet while you heal. Meanwhile, you want me to fill your role, right? Got it in one. I'm glad we're on the same page here. Surely someone else is up to the task. Professor Manuela, for example. Already tried. Trust me, I wouldn't ask unless I was desperate. I knew how much you'd hate the idea. Aside from hating it, I also wouldn't remotely sound like you do. Oh, don't worry about that. Most of our audience won't be able to tell the difference. The crowd's going to be a bunch of down-on-their-luck children that the monastery's taken in. I'm only talking about a small festival in the plaza. We want to give them a good show, that's all. You have an idea of what they've been through. I thought you might want to pitch in. Mm-hmm. I hear your angle. Fine, fine, yes. I'll do it. Good for you. I knew you'd rise to the occasion. You certainly know how to pull heartstrings to get your way, don't you? Where did you learn to do that anyway? The opera? Could be. I've never known a songstress who wasn't both beautiful and resourceful. Now, are you ready to go over the libretto? You've got a lot of rehearsing to do before the performance. Seriously, though. Thanks, Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Yurikins, isn't it about time you let go of this grudge? <sighs> I'm sorry I dragged you out onto the stage, but I can't believe you're still holding it against me. 
I bear no grudge. Then why do you get this stony look and face the other way any time you catch a glimpse of me? <sighs> oh, Ladybird. Truth be told, when I see you, it reminds me of my own self-loathing. Of my past. Huh. I didn't know you were carrying something like that. You rose up from your hardships and became the lead singer for a prestigious opera, all on your own. While I made my way through the world by licking the boots of wretched nobles. Watching you on stage from the sidelines. It wasn't until recently that I felt a real sense of accomplishment in my life. But recalling that first pivotal moment when I saw you on stage, you were brilliant. You shone like nothing I'd ever seen. Whenever I see you, Lady Bird, I'm reminded of that moment. And in that moment, I had never felt so filthy and unlovable in all my life. That's why you don't like singing? There's got to be more to it than that. Back then, the Imperial capital was swarming with disgusting nobles. All of them vying for your attention. For the love of the Dorothea. Many were willing to compromise with an inferior substitute. If they couldn't have you, perhaps someone else was capable of singing just as sweetly. You do what you must to chase your dreams. You say it left you filthy and unlovable, but my life didn't leave me unscathed either. There's not much love left in what I do. There was once, of course. As a child, I lived for singing. No matter how hard times got, I always had that. I counted myself so lucky to have met Manuela and joined the opera, but the more I sang for a living, the less certain I was that I loved it anymore. You're a tricky one to assess. I can't tell if you're too wise or too naive for your own good. Whether or not your heart's in it now, you certainly didn't appear to hate it back then. I'd never seen you beam so brightly as you did when you helped me train for the performance. You might be onto something. I felt genuinely happy in that moment. You just lost your spark for singing. Nothing more. It's how I feel about it in a way. How about this? Why not join an opera that doesn't have dealings with nobles? That's a great idea, actually. We'll start something new together, you and me. I don't know about all that now. The world is full of people who fell through the cracks just like us. We'll take them in whenever we can and aim to become Fodlin's premier opera company. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was this fired up. Though we'll have to table it until after the war. Hmm. Huh. Our own one-of-a-kind traveling opera. You know, that does sound fairly thrilling. I have no doubts it could help deepen our pockets. Leave it to you to take all the romance out of it. But I know you're an idealist deep down. Takes one to know one. I must say, I do enjoy seeing your mischievous side at work. I'll take that as a compliment. I could say the same for you, too. It's exactly why I'm comfortable sharing this dream with you. Sure.